What's that one magical ingredient we all need in order for our web business to grow? Guesses? That ingredient is community. In this episode, I'll share my top tips for determining who your community is, how to position yourself as an expert and leader, and strategies for attracting collaborative partnerships so you can be in service to the collective along the way. Community helps our numbers reach engagement and views. It ensures we have opportunities for partnerships and monetization. Building an engaged and collaborative community online takes strategy, persistence, and a deep belief in the transformation people can experience by becoming an active member of the collective that you are creating. To find your community, let's start by considering this. Who are the people we want to attract in the first place? When considering building a community and a support network, think about what makes up your perfect people. In business, the perfect people idea has all sorts of names. Target audience, avatar, persona, ideal customer. To begin, ask yourself about your perfect people. What are their interests? and goals and dreams? What keeps them awake at night? What do they read? What do they listen to and watch? And if you had to name them, what would you call them? For example, I call my people modern mystics. Maybe yours are creative fashionistas, digital nomads, fun foodies, or empowered mamas. To keep your perfect people at the top of mind, spend a few minutes scrolling through Instagram, creating a saved tab of your perfect people. While you're considering your perfect people, have some fun in envisioning who exactly your community is made up of. I use this approach to define them and what they'd be looking for in a community a bit further. I write, my vision is to be the X of my niche topic. Here's a few examples of how I would apply that. If I was creating a blog around wellness coupled with highly curated retreat style travel, I might write, my vision is to be the Gwyneth Paltrow of luxury travel. When we can start to envision ourselves in this way, we can start to picture the people who would show up to be a part of our community. Here's how to position yourself as an expert. When you get started, what your audience cares about is how well you're connecting them to the topic that they are interested in. They don't care if you're a world-renowned blogger yet. They just need to trust that you have more information than they have and that you are a wonderful resource for them to learn more from. A good place to establish your credibility is your about page. Be sure to include your mission, what you offer, your training, your life lessons or experiences, examples of previous projects, and any stats that demonstrate your knowledge. Now that you've identified your perfect people and are ready to share your expertise, let's talk about the four stages of building a community. The four stages are awareness, interest, decision, and action. Let's start with awareness. In the awareness stage, we're using your most authentic voice to offer your potential community members something that betters their life. In my case, I share freebie workbooks and videos that are of high value. They inspire my perfect people to join my email list, subscribe to my blog, and or follow my social channels. Use language that you'd use with your closest friends. Your potential community members want to join a community in which they feel like they're seen and that they will belong. The next stage is interest. In the interest stage, pique their interest by answering this one primary question. How do I know if this community is for me? You can be completely direct and use copy like, this community is for you if dot dot dot. Address questions that you had when you found your way into whatever your current expertise is, remembering that whatever questions you had, someone else like you is likely wondering about the exact same thing. As you continue to focus on interests, tell personal stories with a clear purpose that further creates a personal connection 
to your community. This doesn't mean you have to be the star of every story, but you should be open about your experiences. This gives your audience a buy-in for staying interested. The next stage is decision. In the decision stage, it's time to encourage a deeper connection. The way you do this is to keep showing up. Writing from experience on your blog is a great way to do this. You can also use IG Lives and Stories, podcasts, Clubhouse, and Facebook groups for this. The final stage is action. All your work comes down to this stage, the stage of action. This is the moment when your perfect people either move forward engaging with you, your blog, and your web business, or they don't. The type of action I like to see is for my community to join my email list, subscribe to my podcast and blog, sign up for my courses and membership program, and follow me on social media channels. If they don't go all the way in at first, the deal isn't lost forever. Keep showing up. My final tip for building your community network is a simple one. Reach out to people you believe would enjoy engaging in cross-community efforts and would be awesome collaborative partners. You can do this over DMs. However, I like to send emails too. You can download my two-part email template in the description below. Building an online community you love takes strategy, persistence, and a belief in yourself. I'm cheering you on as you create a collective of amazing people who love what you are creating. In the next episode, I'll talk about setting boundaries and balancing life as a solopreneur web creator. I hope you've enjoyed the video and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'll see you next time.